You've probably heard about the Mario 64 iceberg. It's an image showing an iceberg separating the theories and trivia of Mario 64 in layers. There's been a few people talking about this. There's the actual Mario 64 video, there's the uh, Pokemon one, there's the Minecraft one, there's the... <sighs> yeah. But when I think about obscure shit, I think about Sonic. So today we're gonna be looking at the Sonic iceberg. Without further ado, let's fucking dive in. Sonic Extreme was the name of a cancelled main Sonic game that would have been released for the Sega Saturn in Christmas 1996. It was going to be the first fully 3D Sonic game. Development started in 1994 and the game was going to be released for the Genesis, later to the 32X, and finally the Saturn. Internal problems and company politics hindered development beyond the saving point, and the game was officially cancelled in 1997, sinking the Sega Saturn in the American market. Dr. Ovi Kintober is a character from the Fleetway Sonic comic. He was a friendly scientist that arrived from Earth to planet Mobius through a dimensional warp. He set up shop in Emerald Hill and began working in ways to improve the life there. While working, he learned about the Chaos Emeralds and the Chaos Energy and created the kinetic gyratosphere that transformed Sonic from a normal hedgehog to what he is now. One day, while hungry, he tried cooking a rotten egg, tripped over a wire, fell into a computer panel, damaging the system, creating a chain reaction with the egg, and exploded. From the ashes, he rose as Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Several changes occurred while developing the port of Sonic Adventure. This messed up with the lighting, hardcore, the character models, and such. If you want more detail into it, I can recommend you this fucking video. In the files for the original Sonic, there's an unused sprite of Sonic wearing goggles, probably for underwater zones like Labyrinth. These goggles will later be used in Sonic Mania. The show Nicker Kate famously showed a prototype version of Sonic 2 that dates around the beginning of 1992. The gameplay was more closer to the original Sonic, and several leftovers from it can be found within the prototype, such as the music. After Sonic 3 and Knuckles split into two games, some remnants of the later part of the game can be still found in Sonic 3. You can access all the areas from Sonic and Knuckles through cheat codes, though they're fucking unplayable and will crash your game. Yep. The barrel refers to an infamous segment in Carnival Night Zone. At this particular point in the stage, you hit a dead end with the door closing behind you, and a barrel next to you. This part caused a lot of confusion among younger players, as there was no obvious way to get past the fucking barrel. Of course, we all know that all you had to do was get on the barrel and then hit up and down, but this is the only instance in the whole game where you need to do this to progress. This can be considered Sonic's 3 version of the pit from Sonic 2, though not as bullshit. So Mario is an unlicensed port of Sonic the Hedgehog for the Famicom. It was released in 1994 by Hammer Team. The game features Mario as the main character and doesn't show Sonic at all. Development of the game is shrouded in mystery, as there are no accounts when it was actually released, though 1994 seems to be the most approximate date. The most accepted theory is that the game came from somewhere in Asia, and that the development team managed to recreate the source code for the Genesis games and use it for Somari. The Sonic Cycle is a concept that shows the emotional roller coaster that is the reveal of a new Sonic game. It starts with the new game being announced, hyping up the audiences, making the claim that Sonic is back to form. It continues with more information about the game that ends up being received with mixed feelings, and finally the game comes out and it's fucking destroyed. The people who claim that Sonic was back are now claiming that Sonic is lost forever. And the cycle starts again as soon as the new game is announced. Honey the Cat is a cut character from the 1996 game Sonic the Fighters. While not pressing the game, Honey's data is still pressing within the game's code. Through that, hackers were able to hack her back into the game, although with some glitches. Honey was eventually officially added in the 2012 re-release of Sonic the Fighters. In Sonic Adventure 2, you have the option to select different character themes for the menus. This includes Sonic, Shadow, Amy, Maria, and bizarrely enough, the President's Secretary, an incredibly minor character from the story mode. Throughout the story mode of Sonic Adventure 2, you can encounter Big the Cat, he cannot be interacted with, but he will be around doing several shit. He was most likely added just as a cameo, and that's it. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle from the GameCube removed most of his cameos for some reason, but they were restored back in the 2012 re-release. Mephiles, Mephistopheles, literally, that's it. It's the evil part of the god Solaris, Satan. Windy Valley went through the most changes while developing Sonic Adventure. The Veda stage, while still having three different acts, features different textures and level design. It was way more open-ended, and it didn't end with the Sonic 3 Blast special stage thing. That was a nice flight, but let's actually touch the iceberg now. 
Sonic Crackers is an early Sonic prototype that was believed to be used for engine testing. It's also believed that this is where the idea and testing of mechanics for Knuckles Chaotix began, as the rubber banding thing is present here. Some of the assets were used for the 2013 re-release of Sonic 2 added to the egg gauntlet. Also, a Tails sprite is present in a prototype for the game Yu Yu Hakusho Makyo Toitsen. R2 is a deleted zone of Sonic City. When you examine the game's files on PC, the zones are labeled as R1, R3, and R4, etc. But R2 is nowhere to be found. Programmer Jim Treadway speculated that the level was cut because it didn't meet the standards. Parts of the stage can actually be seen in the Sonic FMB animation for the ending. And Christian Whitehead showed some of the sprites from the cut level when he was porting Sonic City to phones. In the Japanese version of Sonic Adventure, there's a neon cowgirl sign in Casinopolis. If you actually hit the sign with Knuckles, it moans and it makes suggestive noises. Due to this and its provocative nature, the girl sitting in a seductive way holding a glass of alcohol, the sign was removed in future versions of the game. During Sky Chase in Sonic Adventure, there was supposed to be a dragon miniboss, but it was cut due to time constraints. You can, however, see the dragon through hacking. It's just flying behind the tornado, out of the normal view. It only has its flying animation and no attacks. The dragon seems to have been cut early in development due to the lack of animations. Some speculate that it could have been the reason why the tornado was shut down during the campaign. Splats is a cut enemy from the original Sonic the Hedgehog game. It's a robotic rabbit with a spring. Despite being cut from the final game, it still managed to show up in several promotional materials. It wasn't until Sonic Mania where it made its official debut. Between 2009 and 2015, professional man-child Ken Penders started a legal battle against Sega and Archie. Penders was the head writer of the Archie Sonic comics from the early 90s to the mid-2000s. In 2009, after he copyrighted several characters he created for the comic, he began a legal battle against Sega and Archie for the use of his characters. Penders won the case for some fucking reason, causing the main timeline of the comic series to be entirely reshaped. Pingus is a popular misheard phrase spoken by Robotnik in the 1993's cartoon The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. The peculiar way he delivers the line, snooping as usual, I see, prompted many parodies, and that was a very popular clip used during the golden age of YouTube poops. For a long time, there was a theory that Michael Jackson worked on music for Sonic 3. This was brought about due to the fact that several tracks from the game bear similarities to Jackson's songs. Aside from Michael, frequent contributor Brad Boxer also helped compose music for the game, using an unreleased song from 1982 as the basis for Ice Cap Zone, for example. With the rumor now basically confirmed, it's no surprise that re-releases of Sonic 3 are rare, as it seems Sega would have to pay a shit ton of money for licensing. For more information, you can check this video. A Sonic Flow debuted during the 1993 Macy's Day Parade to promote Sonic the Hedgehog 3, being the first video game character to be presented in the parade. However, strong winds made the balloon crash against a light pole, causing damage to the balloon that had to be removed from the parade. The accident caused minor injuries to a child and a police officer. Mr. Needle Mouse was the name given to several character prototypes for Sonic the Hedgehog. Needle Mouse is also apparently the Japanese word for hedgehog. Flicky is a 1984 arcade platform game developed by Sega. The player controls a small blue bird who tries to save little chicks from evil cats. While having nothing to do with Sonic, and actually predating his existence for years, Flicky never actually had a sequel, and his characters were later used as... Flickies for the Sonic series. He has since made several cameo appearances. Magic gloves are an upgrade for Sonic in Sonic Adventure 2. It allows the player to use the magic hands attack, which captures and shrink enemies, which then can be thrown to other enemies. This is a reference to an early Sonic the Hedgehog idea where Sonic was a rabbit that would throw objects using his ears. Some people believe Robotnik's actually trying to achieve some technological utopia to help humanity. Uh, I, I, I guess? Alright, hold your breath, boys. We're going deeper. Now, this is just a throwaway line from the Sonic Archie comics. Later storylines tell of Maurice Hedgehog, Sonic's grandfather, and how he was named after him. This was a character conceived during Sonic's development. It was supposed to be a human woman that would be Sonic's girlfriend. It was decided that she would be cut and Sega never used a human girl ever again. Now a year ago, the original Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer was met with overwhelmingly negative reception due to Sonic's fucking awful design. Jesus fucking Christ. Paramount acknowledged this and vowed to redesign the character. 
Now, thanks to our boy Tyson Hess, we got an actual good design that was praised by the community, as it showed a big corporation on the side of the fence. Now, some people believe that the original design was made horrible on purpose, from Paramount to use this expected backlash to then show the new design and win people over again. If this is true, then this worked wonders, as the Sonic movie was a massive hit despite being, um, you know, awful. Chaos from Sonic Adventure is believed to be a mutated Chow, as in the original Sonic Channel description it states that he is. Aside from that, in Sonic Adventure there's an unused audio of Chaos from a cutscene where he makes the same sound as a Chow. Now this was a popular creepypasta back in the day. It is believed that Tails Doll is a demon that lives inside Sonic R from the Sega Saturn. If you play tag as Tails Doll and then manage to catch Super Sonic, the curse will unleash, making a Tails Doll plushie appear and kill you in real life. Real spooky shit. During development of Super Smash Bros. Melee, Sonic's co-creator, Yuji Naka, said that it would have been possible to add Sonic into the game, with both Sakurai and Miyamoto saying that they would have approved the character. However, a popular hoax claimed that Sonic and Tails were unlockable in the game, and the way to unlock them was to defeat 20 enemies in the cruel melee mode. Nassau is the name given to an alternate Super Sonic transformation that was shown in the Japanese trailer for Sonic X. The name Nassau comes from the name of the file of the character screenshot. The transformation was never used, but the character gained popularity due to fan work, like the amazing Nassau Unleashed. Wechnia is a glitch character from Knuckles Chaotix. He is a recolored gray Knuckles with red strands. This glitch character is actually leftover data from Tails, who was originally meant to be playable alongside Sonic. In Marvel Zone, there's these architectures that appear to show Mario's face looking forward. At least he's looking and not walking towards you. While we're on the subject, an early version of Marvel Zone had UFOs in the sky, but they were later removed from the game. The 2013 re-release of the game allows you to activate the UFOs through the use of the debug mode. During the Red Mountain stage in Sonic Adventure, you can stumble across a prison cell that shows two ghostly prisoners. Go a bit further into the stage and you can encounter one of those ghosts outside. You can't interact with it, however. During development of Knuckles Chaotix, Sonic was supposed to star in the game. However, he was replaced by Mighty the Armadillo, who shares a lot of sprites animations with Sonic, indicating that Sonic was cut late in development, and they just reused his sprites to save on time. Okay, so there's this huge, I mean, fucking gigantic theory about how Sonic is the actual ultimate life form that was created in the Ark, and that Shadow is just a copy created in Prison Island. It is allowed to take, but I'm just going to blink the thread here. I don't know about this one, but every time we see Sonic chill and he's always sitting under a tree or a beach, we never seen Sonic's house, or even if he has a house. In Sonic Adventure, we can see Tails' house, or workshop at least, Knuckles' uh, house, Bigs. Uh, you know what, I guess no one fucking has a house here. According to an interview with Juji Naka, a Sonic 2 prototype was stolen from a toy fair in New York in 1992. Later on, copies of this prototype began to surface in Asian markets. People dubbed this prototype the Simon Way prototype, after the guy who found the ROM on an Asian website. In Japan 2015, a mysterious statue of Sonic with a snowboard was discovered by a couple of bikers. The statue was pretty damaged due to exposure, with Sonic losing his nose. No one really knows when or who put the statue there in the forest. Some blocks were discovered with pictures dating to 2009 with Sonic still with his nose. Later in 2015 again, a video surfaced of Sega World with some footage of what it seems to be the statue. However, no one knows when or why the statue was moved. As of 2020, the statue is still there, and it has been completely restored. The Sonic Bible is an internal document written by Sega during development of the original game. The objective of the document is to expand and flesh out the setting and the universe, while also giving backstory to some characters. In this document, it explains that Sonic was a regular hedgehog named Sony Hedgehog before turning into Sonic. This document also includes Dr. Kintober. In 2019, an early prototype of Sonic 3 leaked online, dated 1993. It revealed a lot of unused assets. One in particular was Sonic's ability to spin dash after a jump, just like in Sonic Mania. Genocide City Zone, or Cyber City Zone, was an endgame to a scrap Sonic the Hedgehog 2 stage. It seems like the stage would have been a cyber theme, kinda like Metropolis. The level would have only consisted of one act. After the zone was cut, it was actually redesigned for Metropolis, hence why the zone has three acts. The initial name sparked a lot of debate and theories from fans, but it was likely just a name given as a placeholder. Also, just Japanese people being Japanese people. 
In Sonic Adventure 2, if you go to the Chow Garden with Rouge and climb up a wall, then move to the left, her eyes fuck up big time, distorting and expanding. Why? No idea. Just like Mighty Sonic, Sonic was supposed to be in the game as well, but scrapped and his prize were used to make Mighty. In the game Sonic and the Secret Rings, you can see Big around, just like in Sonic Adventure 2. However, unlike all the other characters that use Arabian names and clothing or whatever, Big looks just like Sonic, implying that he was also sucked inside the book alongside Sonic. Popful Mail Magical Fantasy Adventure is a 1991 side-scroller game that was released on computers, PC Engine and Sega CD only in Japan. Plans to localize the game in America were cancelled, but what do we know is that Sega version would have replaced the main character and aesthetics with Sonic characters. One example is replacing the main character with Sonic's long-lost sister. No, no, not that one. In Sonic Adventure, inside the egg carrier there are two capsules. One containing Metal Sonic and the other one containing an unnamed Sonic duplicate robot. This robot is never facing the game and you can only see it inside this area. People have speculated that this is supposed to be Mecha Sonic from Sonic 2, but nothing's been confirmed. I gotta admit, I hit a wall with this one. Uh, apparently it has something to do with the glitch in Sonic Adventure 2's final rush. Something about dying and grinding? Uh, sorry, couldn't really find anything else. Terios was supposed to be Shadow's original name while developing Sonic Adventure 2. It roughly translates to Reflection Off, which mirrors the good versus evil theme in the game. This seems to be a quote from Sonic Archie comic about how Antoine is faster than Sonic. Ah, oh, damn you benders. Again, this layer is kinda like... I don't know. I didn't really find a lot about this one, but I'm guessing it's because uh, the Sonic Boom show has a lot of fourth wall breaking. Also, maybe because some of the characters are radically different, but I don't really know. I actually couldn't find the theory. Let me know in the comments. In Red Mountain in Sonic Adventure, you can spot a cell that contains an electric chair inside. <laughs> this is maybe to keep the prison aspect in the volcano area. As you can see, a few ghost prisoners behind the bars. Maybe they were killed with the chairs. Cope or Copay or Copy alongside Opt, CPU and On are flashing signs that show up in Springyard Zone in the original Sonic. No one really knows what they mean, but with the words On and CPU, I'm guessing they have something to do with like the coding for the game or maybe a programming joke. Uh, it seems that because the characters are portrayed closer to the official source, people think that their story of Tales of Stroll is canon, even though it's not at all. Uh, there's a bunch of Sonic bootleg plushies, and that's... that's it. During development of Sonic Triple Trouble, the character of Nag the Weasel had what appears to be a revolver. This was later changed to a core gun, for obvious reasons. Ian Flynn, one of the writers from the Sonic comic, has stated that Sega intended for the Time Eater from Sonic Generations to be a reborn form of Mephiles, showing that a part of him survived after the events of Sonic 06. This, however, was never confirmed by Sega. In the last Sonic mobile game, Sonic Runners, there was a Halloween update, an event that erroneously labeled King Boom Boo as King Boop Boo. Sega quickly fixed the mistake and issued an apology. Vector the Crocodile was first conceived as a band member for the Sonic the Hedgehog band, a band that would have showed up during the sound test for the original game. The band also included Sonic, uh, Hanamichi Sakuragi, a rabbit and a monkey. Beanville is a town that was mentioned in Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. The town is somewhere in Mobius, but no one really knows which part. Apparently it's inhabited by the Beanfolk. Sonic Sense is a pretty obscure ability that Sonic has, which kinda works like the Spider Sense. When Sonic senses danger, he... sneezes. This has been shown in early Sonic manga. There's also an unused Sonic CD sprite of Sonic sneezing, but probably has nothing to do with it. Ashura is the name given to a glitch sprite of Sonic in Sonic 2. If you use the debug mong and fuck around spawning a shit ton of waterfalls, you can mess up Sonic's palette. This changes him to a green and black. The Sonic fandom, being the Sonic fandom, named him Ashura and made a fuck ton of fan art about him. After Sonic and the Secret Rings and Sonic and the Black Knight, two games based off storybooks, people speculated that a third entry would follow. Sega did run a contest to see what fans wanted to see in the next game. Some options included an Old Wes, a Haunted House and Ancient Greek. However, no storybook has been announced since. Amy apparently has tarot cards that she used to find Sonic. This is mentioned in Sonic Battle and Sonic Chronicles, apparently. Just like Vector, Max the Monkey was originally a band member for the sound test of Sonic 1. However, he never showed up officially in any game. He did show up in the Archie comics, though. 
Looking at the shape of Sonic from the mural of Sonic 3, it has his quills upwards, just like Shadow. It was also explained that Gerald showed interest in the Echidna tribe and its history, probably basing Shadow's design of this mural. The character Mark that appears in the 2014 TV series Sonic Boom bears a lot of similarities to... Christian Weston Chandler, creator of Sonic Chew. This has been denied by the show writers, claiming that they never heard of him. Right. Pepsi Man is a 1991 PS1 game featuring the Chad Pepsi Man, running through a San Francisco looking city. The game even has a boarding segment, just like Sonic Adventure 2, released in 2001. This is the name of an unused graphic from the game Sonic Adventure. The picture in question features Yuji Uekawa alongside Naoto Oshima holding a picture of a realistic looking Sonic. The picture was taken during the development of Sonic Adventure. Shinichi Igashi, the guy in charge of designing Fang the Sniper, or Nag the Weasel, had a Jerboa in mind. The fuck's a Jerboa? Well, this is a Jerboa. However, the sales department of SEGA settled on the character being half Jerboa and half Wolf in Japan and a Weasel in America. Four kids, Sonic X, that's it. In Sonic Mania's Hydrocity, if you grab onto a chain and hold left, 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 right, 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 up, 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 a ring sound chimes, and the next time you use one of those speed boost machines, uh, a sound from video game Donkey Place. This is from his Best of 2016 video. While developing Sonic, his personality was based off Bill Clinton, his gloves off Michael Jackson, and his shoes based off... Santa Claus? Okay, so Prison Island gets fucking nuked by Eggman during the story mode of Sonic Adventure 2. Just how many people did Eggman kill there? Sonic Super Hedgehog was a Russian quiz show that prominently featured Sonic. Episodes of this show were considered lost, but over the years more and more clips are showing up online. I don't know what this has to do with Sonic, but when Vectorman was released in 1995, it also advertised a contest in which you can read about 25k fucking dollars. Neat! This is the earliest known prototype of Sonic 3, that was leaked last year. It revealed a bunch of information, like the songs of Carnival Night, Ice Cap and Launch Base are the same ones you hear in the Sonic and Knuckles collection, meaning that those songs were the original ones until Jackson and Boxer joined the project. It also uses new animations for Sonic at the start of the game, and just a bunch of other neat little things. It's fascinating that something like this was uncovered. Now this one says, do not research, but I think it's just messing with us. Many people know about Knuckles Chaotix and the 32X, but another Sonic game was planned for the shit system. This was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, an updated version of the classic game that would have added a shit ton of special features. With the power of the 32X, many of the changes made to the game would have radically changed the later levels. However, since the 32X sucked so hard and Sega pulled the plug on the whole thing, the project was cancelled only months before its release. Sonic 6 is a bootleg hack of Speedy Gonzalez for the Game Boy. The sad face refers to a Game Over screen which presents an edited version of the Sonic from the menu of the Sonic 3D Blast. Only he big sad. The song wrapped in black from the game Sonic Rush bizarrely enough samples the phrase too black too strong, which comes from the popular Malcolm X speech message to the grassroots. What the actual shit? Eel Bleed is a 2001 survival horror game for the Sega Dreamcast that has a boss fight with a demonic Sonic parody called Soldic the Hellhog. The Sega Dreamcast was the first video game console that could connect to the internet. With this feature a few games utilized this and had early versions of DLC. Sonic Adventure had a couple of DLC, but since support of the online ceased decades ago, the content was never utilized again for the future ports. These DLCs were believed to be lost, though some people have recreated them. For more info you can check out this video. Sonic fans normally screech about Sonic Adventure 3 coming out, when in reality, it kind of already came out. Several adventure features can be found in Sonic 06, Sonic Unleashed, which Japanese name is Sonic World Adventure, and Sonic Heroes. Sonic's real name is Sonic! In the Fleetway Sonic the comic, Super Sonic is an evil demon that lives inside Sonic after being exposed to chaos energy. Eventually they separated, and Super Sonic became his own entity. Later on in the comic he gets amnesia and forgets how to be evil. In the theme for the Big Boop, the, I mean Big Boom Boo battle, you can faintly hear someone whispering, who's there? 
The Chow Garden in the original version of Sonic Adventure 2 had a little pond, and sadly for Tails, he's not tall enough and can actually die here. Absolutely fucking awful show Sonic Underground has a really fucking funny scene where the totally original character, Manic, tries to save a baby, fails, and the baby fucking dies! Sonic the movie loves Olive Garden. Maybe because it sounds like other zones, like Marble Garden or Press Garden? Penders had several scripts prepared to pitch a Sonic movie, but nothing materialized. Years later, when the actual Sonic movie released, he claimed that some of the aspects of his scripts were stolen. Even though that never happened, Ken. Come on. So I believe this refers to the theory on how Mephiles is basically the devil and wants to destroy Sonic. What better way to destroy him than by ruining his reputation? So he made Sonic bad on purpose to destroy him. And in many people's eyes, he kinda did. Rouge has a motherfucking dominatrix costume for Sonic Adventure 2. What the fuck is this? Kinda like it though. This refers to a pretty well-known creepy part of Sonic CD. In the sound menu, if you input the right code, you'll be greeted by this bizarre Sonic with a... Wario's face? With the Japanese text that translates to Funny Symphony, Sega Incorporated, signed Majin. Majin can mean the devil in Japanese too. So Robotnik's Mean Beam Machine is basically a reskin version of Puyo Puyo for the West. The original game had the devil on it, and who replaces it in the American version? Robotnik. During Sonic's 25th anniversary stream, there was a pretty awful bossing sound that messed up a bit of the event. The bossing was referenced in Sonic Mania's Studiopolis. Okay, so if you ever took like a long ass car ride and get bored, you would just look out the window and imagine a man running alongside you. Some people also imagine this person to be Sonic. This, of course, happened before smartphones. There's so many people believing that MJ worked on Sonic 3 that this theory is actually more obscure. Just like there's a bunch of evidence that Jackson was in the project, there's also accounts that denies this. It could have all just been done by Boxer. And remember, there were a bunch of other composers. Eggman pissed on the moon to put Obama in his place! The Man 3 is a poster that you can see during the final boss of Tails' campaign in Sonic Adventure. You cannot see this poster anywhere else but in this section. This one completely destroyed me. When I searched Hidden Face, all I could find is the Sonic CD face. But I don't know much more than that. But since we're here, what's up with the face? What is it? Christian Weston Chandler, who now goes by Christine Weston Chandler, is an autistic artist who suffers from mental illness. He has come to believe that he is God in this universe, and that Sonichu, his creation, and a bunch of other fictional characters exist within a separate universe, where he rules as God. Ooh, well, that took a long time. I know some of this information is kind of hit or miss. Maybe this wasn't the best iceberg image out there, as there were a few points that were obvious jokes. But I feel like it covered a lot of a franchise. I also know that I kind of skipped some stuff that was also obscure, like Sonic Eraser or Sonic Extreme. But hey, maybe in another video. And I don't know, maybe because I wanted to make videos that I would actually enjoy watching, and <laughs> I know I would enjoy watching a fucking video about this especially this long, and kinda got inspired by other Iceberg videos. You probably noticed it by the way this is edited. I apologize if some of this information was wrong or misinterpreted the actual segment of the Iceberg, I don't know. Also for my thick ass accent and my fucking... I repeat a lot of shit. Uh, sometimes I have issues speaking. <laughs> well, if you made it to this point, thanks a lot for checking this out. I wanna make more videos like this one. Of course, you can give me feedback and recommend whatever the hell you guys want. Till the next time, stay safe, boys.